It's a great experience, great opportunity. To go a walk if you need to. Seven finalists. Oh my gosh, you're going to the Met. Oh my gosh, you're doing national council auditions. The mental focus to prepare for this, it can derail a singer. The thing that's so important about this competition is that it is the way these young talents get recognized. It's the first step in building a major career. I need to stay healthy. I need to be completely rested. So last night, I took three sleeping pills. Ah, mes amis, ah, mes amis is famous for nine high seas. I've dreamed about performing at seas are right on every time. Most of the time. <laughs> so say to my parents, I'm going to give it 100%. And if nothing comes of it, then hey, go back, get my doctorate, start something else. <laughs> They're wanting to get away from hiring people who have some sort of a weight issue, <laughs> which affects me. Being smaller has its issues. I don't have the lung capacity that your more stereotypical opera singer has. My C is not great. I will not claim it to be great at all. I've never sung this to Arias as bad as I just did. I've never sung it that poorly. Relax your nerves, close your eyes, and sing. <laughs> your competitors even though they've all been so kind How are you feeling? Do you look in love with they're still your competitors this is a competition everyone wants to win they're going to play the game however they need to play the game this is the most nerve-wracking part they're really really good singers i just feel like i'm really ahead you're not maybe it's like a slam dunk maybe <laughs> Lisette Orpesa, who plays appropriately Lisette, and Marios Renchu or Prunier. You two provide the comic relief in this opera. Is that as easy as it looks? Uh, I don't know what, if what's her opinion, but <laughs> I'm hungry about comic roles because in the repertoire, the ten repertoire normally, which I do, like Rodolfo or uh, uh, Bonnier and or others, you have no comic things, so except Elysia perhaps. I feel the same way. I yeah. always want to be funny, and I can't. Yes, so and I you're, always want to be tragic. If you have <laughs> Yeah, this is a straight curly hair problem, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Really um, and, and, you know, it, what's interesting about your character is that you start Magda off with this song about Doretta, and then you read her palm and tell her that she's a swallow. Are you masterminding her escape? Yes and no. I mean, I give a suggestion, but I know that for her, probably materially, it will be better to stay with Rambaldo because we see in the end that uh, also from material problems uh, they, they split uh, Rogero with Magda. So, yeah, I think it's an idea of freedom. You do. He does have that yeah. in mind. So, Lisette, you're a graduate of the Lindemann Young Artist Program and you had a breakthrough here stepping in and as Susanna in the Marriage of Figaro. How did this artist program at the Met prepare you for this experience? Wonderfully. Uh, it really made me feel confident. It made me feel like I had, uh, like Mozart was right at my side, which oh. is really great. Uh, and, uh, you know, you also stepped in as your big major breakthrough, as we all know, is Countess. And also Notte di Fiero is the most wonderful opera to, to start in. It's well, just, you're in an ensemble with wonderful colleagues who yeah. are supportive. I, yeah, I had that experience, absolutely. Yeah. So Susanna and now this role, and you've got this maid thing absolutely <laughs> down. Is, yeah. are, are you particularly well suited for maids? Uh, excuse me. Yeah, I always or, or is it the soubrette? <laughs> is it because you're a soubrette? Well, I, well, you know, I always like to tell people, I think I was a maid in another life. <laughs> I think my last life I was a milkmaid in England somewhere. So coming in and being a servant always just comes very naturally. I don't know. You have a lot of panache in this. I absolutely <laughs> love that. Um, it's, there's so many gorgeous melodies in this opera. What are your favorites? I like everything that he sings. <laughs> I think you have the most gorgeous music in the entire opera. Oh, oh thanks. Oh. But I think what is the most beautiful moment, I think, is the, the ensemble in the second act, yes. which is really fantastic. Is Nobody gorgeous. knows. And everybody comes, starts to sing one. It's one idea which gets everybody in the chorus, all the soloists, orchestra. It's really and beautiful. The, and always at the end, the public is 
really crazy about this yeah. piece. Uh, don't you love the ones that sounds beautiful, but that's so difficult to sing in this quartet, yeah. for sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So students are watching this HD presentation. Uh, do you remember your first operatic experience? Can you tell us what that might have been? Wow. Mine, my mother was a singer, so mine oh, was all my life. Too. I remember being, th yes, me yeah. too. I remember being three and listening to my mom practicing Sempre Libera, my mom sang Traviata, and <laughs> so it's been in my family as long as I can Born remember. to sing. Born to sing. And yeah, how about you? Have you always sung um, too? Well, yes, yes. I did sing from when I was a child, but um, I remember a colleague of mine in school, I was about 10, 12 or something, yes. he brought me to see uh, Slater Mouse. Oh in my native town, and uh, since then, till I, I went to the university, I never lost one performance in my native town, so I saw every everything, wow, opera or opera. Wow, 10 years old, I that's mean, yeah, beautiful. I got so in love with the human oh. voice and with a show that, that I couldn't lose any. That's so beautiful. This is your Met debut also. Yes. Is your fellow landsman, has Angela Gheorghiu and another Romanian helped you in yeah. any way? Have you felt her support? Um, I, I, she always gave me a lot of advices and Fantastic advices, but she's. I hope she doesn't hear. She's a nice colleague too. So. <laughs> Good. Yeah. No, I'm sure she would love that. Yeah. I'm sure she would absolutely love that. Um, did you pre prepare either of you in any specific way, knowing that this was an HD broadcast? Yes, I did. I had to get. I had to we get just the nerves great out. things about you. Yeah, they were. Yay! Oh, they are great. Yeah, you do. Great dress. Yeah. Oh, nice costume. Did you prepare somehow, especially? Uh, I did. I had to get my nerves out before I came on stage, as much as possible. Yeah, I, do, I don't know if I prepared especially this one, but you, uh, for the, the, the IHD you have to be always uh, uh, very careful because one little sound, if it's not quite done, yeah. it will stay yeah. recorded. It's more intimate. Yeah. Well, toy, toy, toy for Act 2. You both are so charming, utterly charming in this. Thank I you love it. Thank you. And enjoy have a great show. As Act 3 begins, Magda has left her life as the mistress of a wealthy banker. She and Ruggiero are enjoying an idyllic life in a hotel by the sea. But remember, he doesn't even know her real name, let alone anything about her past. And now, the conclusion of La Rondine. <laughs> 